Finnegan Bell is a poor, innocent little boy who lives with his sister Maggie and brother-in-law Joe, on a riverside in Florida. He is an orphan and is addressed as Finn. Finn is a gifted artist who draws in his small sketchbook. One day he is out in the river in his small boat, chasing fish in the water to draw them. A usual day for him until a middle-aged man grabs him. Finn yells for help. The man places his strong hand over Finn's mouth to make him stop drawing attention. There is apparently no one near. The man is dressed in orange and has leg cuffs. He is an escaped prisoner. He asks Finn to whisper his name, without losing his hand's grip on him. He wants Finn to meet him here at dawn with a bolt cutter and food. No one should know about it, he warns. He then frees Finn who returns to the dock quickly. He finds Joe there. Joe is a fisherman and is very loving to Finn. Finn thinks of telling him about what unusual and scary thing has happened. But he is too scared to do so. He runs home to find a man leaving hurriedly. Finn sees his sister inside. Apparently, she is unfaithful to Joe. Finn says nothing and goes to sleep. He wakes up at dawn. Maggie and Joe are asleep. He grabs everything the escaped prisoner might need and sets out to the shore. The man has been waiting for him. Finn gives him a bolt cutter, painkillers, food and a beer bottle. Finn watches him cut his leg cuffs. Finn bites his fingernails out of habit. The man forbids him and says it is not a gentlemanly thing to do. He then asks Finn to get in the boat with him and sail to Mexico. Finn says he needs to get back home. The man forces him to come along. They get in the boat and set out on waves. The sun has risen. They are far away from shore and surrounded by water waves. Finn spots a police boat coming their way. The man jumps into the water and hides beneath the waves. The police boat comes near Finn's boat and asks if he is okay. Finn acts cool. The police are searching for an escaped prisoner. Finn says he hasn't seen anyone. The police offer to tow his boat and help him get to the banks. Finn secretly throws a life jacket for the man in the water before leaving with the police. Days pass by. Finn probably forgot about the incident and never told anybody about it. But he did draw a sketch of the man in his drawing book. Joe has some handyman work to do for a millionaireess in Nora Driggers Dinsmore. He drives to her grand mansion and takes Finn along. Ms. Dinsmore is a bitter, secluded crone. 30 years ago, she was left stranded by her disloyal fiancé on her wedding day. Since then time and life stopped for her. She has become bitter, cold and venomous. Her mansion, Paradiso Perjudo, meaning the lost paradise once was a vibrant place, but now is covered in cobwebs and dust. It stayed as it was on her wedding day. She now dresses in flamboyant fashion with horrible makeup. Her niece, Estella, resides with her. She is a pretty little girl of the same age as Finn. Joe goes to the main door to talk to Ms. Dinsmore. Finn stays behind in the front garden, observing the peculiar place. That is when he first sees Estella, who comes walking in front of him. They look at each other. Finn looks mesmerized by her beauty. She asks for his name and leaves. Joe comes back with a paycheck and drives back home with Finn. Ms. Dinsmore saw Finn on his visit. She wants him to come to her mansion daily to play with Estella. She calls Maggie. Maggie is overjoyed at this offer. Joe doesn't think it is a good idea to send little Finn to an eccentric old lady in that creepy place. Maggie is tired of poverty and doesn't mind earning some cash through this. Finn leaves them arguing to watch television. That escaped prisoner is on the news. His name is Arthur Lustig. He has been arrested. He was charged with the death penalty for committing murder. Maggie is dropping off Finn at Ms. Dinsmore's mansion. He is dressed nicely with his hair combed properly. He is instructed by Maggie to talk properly and behave in a mannerly manner. Finn rings the bell. Estella receives him and shows him around. She tells him about the roof being of gold and design inspired by exotic monumental buildings. Estella acts and talks like a diva. She clearly looks down upon poor Finn and is haughty. She leaves him outside Ms. Dinsmore's room. She really is crazy, dancing to a song on a gramophone. She takes Finn in her arms and sways him with her. She then places his hand on her bosom and asks him to feel her broken heart. She has a dark sense of humor. She reclines on the sofa, blows smoke and orders Finn to entertain her with a dance. Finn says he doesn't know how to dance. She gets frustrated. Finn says he can draw for her instead. Ms. Dinsmore calls Estella to her room. She wants Finn to draw a sketch of Estella. While Finn's keenly draw Estella's tresses and big eyes, Ms. Dinsmore finds her chance to exact her revenge on men. She will make Finn fall in love with Estella and then will make sure Estella breaks Finn's heart eventually. She has raised Estella as a femme fatale. And Finn seems to fancy her already. Ms. Dinsmore whispers to Finn that his heart will be broken one day by Estella but he will find it hard to stop loving her. Estella flirts with Finn. He keeps visiting the mansion every weekend to play, dance and be with Estella. He draws and polishes his innate skill. Maggie left home one night and never returned. Joe raised Finn and never mentioned Maggie in their conversations. Years have passed by. Maggie and Finn have entered youth. Finn is still in love with the vain Maggie and visits the manipulative rich Ms. Dinsmore regularly. One evening, Ms. Dinsmore wants Finn to accompany Maggie back home from a party. Finn dresses in a suit and picks Maggie up after the party is over. She says she wants to go to his house. He takes him. Joe isn't home yet. She gazes at Finn's drawings on his room walls. She spots a sketch of her and looks flattered but of course, doesn't show it. 
She comes closer to Finn who is now sitting on a couch. She flirtatiously brushes her bare knee on the back of his hand. She bends down to kiss him passionately and then breaks away, leaving him entranced. He runs after her, asking her to stay. She gives him a seductive and unsympathetic look. She says she is leaving for France tomorrow. She says this in French. He doesn't know French. The next day, Finn goes to the mansion in the hope to meet Estella. Ms. Dinsmore makes him listen to her sad story. She tells him how her heart still aches because of the betrayal. She says she dislikes men. Then she tells Finn that Estella has gone to study in Switzerland and after that, she will reside in Paris. Ms. Dinsmore is happy to see the devastated look on Finn's face. Finn stops drawing. He never visits the mansion again. He gives up on Estella and goes fishing with Joe. Seven years go by like this. Then one day, a lawyer from New York comes to meet him with a proposition. He calls himself Jerry Ragno and says an anonymous wealthy person wants to sponsor Finn's artwork. Finn can come to reside in New York, paint and collaborate with the gallery to have a solo exhibition of his paintings. Ragno claims the gallery's owner has seen his paintings somewhere and is impressed with his work. The secret benefactor will cover all of his expenses. Finn is incredulous. He stopped painting a long time ago, and now, a mysterious man appears to fulfill his dreams. Finn decides to take it. He assumes Ms. Dinsmore is this secret benefactor. He goes to meet her after a decade. She neither denies nor admits that she is sponsoring him. She says she believes in his talent and will come to attend his exhibition. Finn learns that Estella is also in New York. Finn is nervous about flying to a big new city. He has doubts about his artistic skills. Joe boosts his morale like always and says he can do it. Finn lands in New York and meets Erica Thrall, the gallery owner. Finn tries to know what painting of his she happened to see and it made her willing to have him. But Erica never gives a straight answer. She asks Finn to draw something and prove his worth to her. Finn goes into the streets and draws. He is surprised to know he is a natural. A decade of hiatus hasn't diminished his skills whatsoever. It is in New York streets he crosses paths with Estella. She is coquettish as always. She apparently is happy to see Finn. She asks him to meet her tomorrow. Finn arrives at the high-class club she told of. She has some friends with her. They all look like important rich folks. Fenn takes a seat. Estella introduces him as her childhood love, her first love. She praises his drawing skills. Finn wants to paint her again for Erica. Finn learns Estella is in a romantic relationship with Walter Plain, who is sitting there. He is a wealthy businessman. Finn looks grim. Finn is asleep in his apartment when Estella wakes him up. He doesn't know how she got in. She is here for her portrait. Finn jumps out of bed to paint her. To his surprise and pleasure, she strips off her clothing and poses for him. Finn draws her multiple times, capturing her beauty with passion. Every pose of hers arouses his fantasy. She is a tease, a woman who knows the effect she has on a man. She then dresses up and leaves. Finn runs after her out on the road and asks her why she is so cold. Estella says she has been brought up by a woman who dreaded men. She has been fed with fear and loathing for men. Now even a good trustworthy man can't win her heart. The following day, Walter shows up at Finn's flat. He says he is here to see the portraits Finn drew of Estella. He praises Finn for the work he has done. He talks about Estella and implies he is feeling insecure about her. He loves her and can't lose her. Finn indirectly comforts him that he has no plan to come in between them. Finn has proven himself to Erica and she is ready to display his work at her gallery. She provides her spacious studio, food, art supplies and 10 weeks to finish his art pieces for his solo show. Finn gets cheeky and demands publicity for his exhibition to create hype. Ragno is at his service with resources and money on behalf of the benefactor who must be Ms. Dinsmore. Finn believes Ms. Dinsmore is helping him to become up to mark for Estella. Finn decides to indulge in the good luck life has brought to his doorstep. He paints and enjoys prestige. His inspiration is his personal life. He draws Maggie, Joe, Arthur Lustig and Estella. He makes up an inspiring life story of his. He lies that Joe was a drug dealer who passed away and Finn was left with no place to stay. He spent years living in a car. Erica has been successful in doing Finn's publicity. He is all over the news and in magazines. People are anticipating a poor Florida fisherman's art show. He is invited to charity dinners and meets important people. He now dresses in a suit and cherishes his popularity. Estella comes back once again with her playfulness. She tells him that she is marrying Walter soon. Finn is shattered. He can't understand why she is telling him this. She might be wanting him to stop her. Assuming so, Finn sets out to stop her. He is supposed to attend an important event but his mind is elsewhere. He runs to a restaurant where Estella is dining with Walter. He offers to dance with her. She gets up and dances with him. Walter stays seated and silent. Finn and Estella kiss. They leave the restaurant to go to Finn's flat and spend a romantic night together. The next day, she leaves, saying she is going to Florida to meet her aunt. She promises to come back soon to attend his exhibition. Today is his show at the gallery. It is turning out to be a huge success. Erica wants him to meet a famous critic and many other high-profile people. Ragno is there too. Everyone is congratulating him and applauds him for his success. But he is preoccupied with Estella, who is on his mind. She hasn't shown up. Joe pays a surprise visit. He is proud of Finn. He has come dressed in a rented tux. Finn has mixed feelings about seeing Joe at his show. Joe is talking loudly in excitement. His crudeness is embarrassing for Finn. 
Joe is inadvertently blowing off the lies Finn has told people around. Joe is no drug dealer and is very much alive. Joe accidentally bumps into a waitress and knocks down a tray with glasses on. Finn frustratingly snaps at Joe, who apologizes to everyone and heads out. Finn follows him and says it is just not good timing. Joe acts coolly and leaves, telling Finn that he is very proud of him. All of Finn's paintings are sold out. Finn believes he has achieved what he always wanted and is now worthy of having Estella. She must be back from Florida by now. He goes to see her at her abode and is surprised to see Ms. Dinsmore there. She is here to attend Estella's wedding. Estella has married Walter. Walter wasn't proposing to her. So, she used Finn to make him jealous and marry her. Ms. Dinsmore once again watches Finn hurting, a man pining for a woman. She reveals her manipulative plan to him. How she taught Estella to lead him on and make him chase her. How she trained her to break his heart for good and leave him. Ms. Dinsmore reminds him of the warning she gave him when he was little. A warning that Estella will break his heart. Finn takes Ms. Dinsmore's hand and places it on his chest, the way she did years ago. He asks her to feel his broken heart. Ms. Dinsmore at that very moment realizes the terrible thing she has done. She is sorry for her devious plan and wails in regret. Finn leaves. That night a man shows up at Finn's flat. He says he needs to use his phone to call the police. He claims to have been chased by some goons. Finn lets him in. He pretends to make a call to the police. He then introduces himself to Finn. He is Arthur Lustig. Finn is unable to recognize him. Arthur helps him recall. He was caught but managed to escape again. Finn is uncomfortable having him at his place. But Arthur looks excited seeing Finn, a successful artist. He looks around at his artwork and commends him. Arthur says he remembered Finn as a little kind-hearted boy who helped him sincerely years ago. Finn deserves the good things he has got. Arthur gets up to leave, seeing Finn at unease. Finn isn't in his senses tonight, but manages to offer his help to get Arthur out of the building without being seen by police and goons chasing him. They head for the train station. Arthur wants to reach the airport to fly to Paris. He asks Finn to come to Paris with him. Finn refuses. At the train station, while they wait for the train, Arthur sees unsavory acquaintances and outruns them to board the train with Finn. But one of the goons gets on the train and pierces a dagger through Arthur who collapses into Finn's arms. Amidst his last breaths, Arthur breaks the truth to Finn. Arthur was Finn's benefactor. He set up Ragno to bring Finn to New York, arranged for his life here and sponsored his art show. It was Arthur who bought all of the paintings. Arthur shows Finn's sketchbook that he had kept all these years with him. It was the sketchbook Finn accidentally dropped during his first scary encounter with Arthur. Finn goes to Paris and paints there. He excels at it. He comes to know about Estella. She got divorced. Finn moves back to Florida. Joe is more than happy to see him. Joe has remarried and has a kid. Joe tells Finn that Ms. Dinsmore passed away a while ago. Her mansion will be brazed down to the ground to build a residential colony. Finn visits it for one last time and reminisces over his life. He thinks he has seen an apparition of little Estella. He follows her through the grand mansion to the riverside in the back. He sees Estella standing there. The little girl is her daughter. Finn is pleased and surprised to see Estella. She has come to show her daughter the ruins of her aunt's mansion. She has been reading about Finn, the famous artist. She confesses she thought of Finn all these years and that she is very sorry for hurting him. Finn says he knew the real her from the very start despite whatever happened. They hold each other's hands and look at the sun setting at the end of the river. 